Hello everyone, thank you for coming. We're very excited to have you here. We're here to talk about an important and exciting piece of legislation that we're really looking forward to see proposed in front of City Council in its coming term, and also to talk a little bit around the background and the context that's given rise to this proposal. Uh, my name is Guy Yedwab, and I'm the Managing Director of the League of Independent Theater. The League is a 501c6 business league that was formed to give a collective voice and take collective action on behalf of any theater or theater company that works in theaters 99 seats or less, and the 50,000 performing artists that work in those spaces. The League was formed in 2008 in the wake of the financial crisis. Funding sources, both public and private, shrank, uh, and the cost of real estate skyrocketed. The independent theater scene was rocked by a bunch of high-profile closures of historic venues. The Ohio Theater, home to the Ice Factory Festival, lost their historic space. The Living Theater, a historic innovator, uh, an incubator of performing arts lost their space as well. Dance New Amsterdam, the Incubator Arts Project, and many other spaces closed over the last five, 10 years. Performance needs a place in order to live and develop and breathe, and therefore it's really important that we preserve and support by providing spaces for performing artists to work. The problems still fa uh, the problems since the financial crisis are still facing the independent theater community. The cost of space, both living and working, continues to spike, and there continue to be closures. This morning, I woke up to the news that Dance Art New York closed their 11 re uh, affordable rehearsal studios. Our cultural sector is fighting to create the kind of vibrant performances that you'll see at theater festivals like Fringe NYC. They are fighting over a dwindling number of spaces to rehearse and perform. But we're not here to talk about problems. We're here to talk about the solutions. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce Councilman Ben Kalos uh, to speak. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today at the 20th Annual New York International Fringe Festival, the premier meeting ground for alternative artists. Thank you to Lena Hoy, co-founder and producing artistic director of the Fringe for her leadership in the arts community and for hosting us today. I finally made it to French. <laughs> uh, this might be a performance like none other at French Festival. I love New York. I love that any day or night, New York has hundreds of different shows I can see. From large institutions to small independent producers to festivals like the Fringe, the arts are not just about an important are not just an important part of the New York economy, but essential to making New York City where everyone wants to be. Unfortunately, the difficulties of being an artist in New York are more than just a trope. The challenges of space to develop, practice, and perform becomes ever more difficult as real estate becomes scarce, prices continue to skyrocket, and the rest of us get squeezed out. In 2013, I met John Clancy and the League of Independent Theater Litany at the most creative candidate screening I have ever been to, accordions and all. Having produced a show at the tank and knowing how difficult performance space was to come by, one of their priorities that resonated with me was leasing space owned and operated by the government of the city of New York to artists. Today, I'm proud to announce City Spaces. It started as soon as I was elected, convincing the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, DCAS, to post city spaces on fractured atlases, spacefinder.org, so that the arts community can easily find the halls of the city, some of New York's premier facilities, like Brooklyn Borough Hall. Getting eight city spaces listed was a good start also just introduced city spaces legislation with, in the city council with majority leader and cultural affairs committee chair, Jimmy Van Bramer, whose communications director, Ariel Swarnoff, joins us here today. The Museum of Contemporary African Diasporan Arts, Mokata founder and council member, Lori Cumbo, as well as council member, Helen Rosenthal. The city spaces legislation will require DCAS to identify city government owned and operated property, such as buildings, lots, or even garages, that are workable after hours use by arts groups looking to meet, rehearse, and perform. City spaces will create a searchable database or simply use spacefinder.org to post information on occupancy 
available hours, insurance requirements, direct and indirect costs, and possibly most importantly, who to contact if you're interested in utilizing a city-owned property, or even better yet, just reserving online. Our hope is that this initiative will help the arts community to find the precious space it needs to create, but also help weave our municipal infrastructure into the fabric of our cultural life. I want to thank Guy Yedwab, John Clancy, and all the artists at the League of Independent Theater for their ongoing commitment to engaging the arts community in the political process. I'd like to thank Adam Hutler and Lisa Niedermeyer at Fractured Atlas for their partnership in working with DCAS to get the halls of the city on spacefinder.org. I'd like to also thank Paul Leibowitz from indiespace.org, dedicated to finding permanent space for indie artists. I'd also like to thank Andrew Wagner at uh, Wide Angle Productions, who uh, volunteers with my office as our cultural liaison. To get this legislation passed, we need the arts community to let council members know this is important to them. How? Calling or emailing your representatives is always effective, but this is the arts community, so let's be creative. My office will post a video of this press conference on YouTube. You'll be able to find the link on bencalos.com as well as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And most importantly, we're asking you to respond and share. Please share your response video on YouTube and any social media with a short video that includes spoken word or dance or song or another mode of expression. Tag it with at Ben Kalos and hashtag City Spaces, one word. Respond in the way artists have always responded, with art. Thank you, Councilman. We're very, we've been very excited about this legislation. This was one of the key uh, um, platform planks of our performing arts platform within the league, something that we've been talking about with the Councilman since before he was the Councilman, so we first met him running for office, so we're very excited about this. I also want to introduce now uh, Elena Holy, who is one of the co-founders of the New York International Fringe Festival, the largest showcase of the types of performing artists who will be uh, affected by this bill. Um, Elena is also one of the Indie Theatre Hall of Fame People of the Decade, uh, which I say to uh, make her blush before she comes up. Alina? <laughs> or age before your eyes. <laughs> Hi, I just want to thank everybody for coming to visit us at Indie Space Presents Fringe Lounge at Downtown Art, which is a big accomplishment for our organization, speaking of space. Um, we are the largest multi-arts festival in North America, so that's 75,000 artists, or sorry, 75,000 audience members, 5,000 artists. Uh, we do, uh, we have about 2,500 registered volunteers. We do about 1,000 performances of 200 shows over 16 days in 16 venues with $18 tickets. And all of that is only possible when we have available space to not only do our performances, but as you may have read in the New York Times, to actually rehearse the shows. So this is an exciting proposal, not only for us, for, but for the entire creative economy, really, of New York City, and a way to hopefully keep these next generations of artists living in New York City to, uh, to maintain that creative economy. So we want to thank Indie Space, and I'd love to bring Paul up to say a few words. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Leibowitz. I am uh, an executive vice president at CBRE in Investment Properties and co-founder of Indie Space. Um, born and raised in New York, arts and culture <laughs> have always been an important part of my life. Growing up in the 70s and 80s, it would have been unthinkable that our cherished artistic venues would ever be lost. Unfortunately, market forces have created a rapid turn of events, resulting in a wave of closures and moves to other cities. As a real estate professional, I understand the value arts generate for our economy and neighborhoods. Yet artists struggle to find affordable places to create their work, and they're being priced out at an alarming rate. We must, as a community, be sure to fight this at every turn. That is why Councilmember Ben Kalis's proposal is so important and is why I co-founded IndieSpace. IndieSpace is a not-profit dedicated to creating permanent real estate solutions for the indie theater community. Through various approaches, IndieSpace will help establish venues stay open, secure new permanent space for the indie community, and will work with real estate owners to carve out space in a variety of projects. Through IndieSpace, access to expertise and resources typically unavailable to indie theater companies and venues 
can be provided and collaboration achieved between artists and the real estate community. By delivering affordable space and supportive programming to a diversity of artists, we can be sure to maintain the vibrancy essential to our status as a cultural capital of the world. Indie Space is proud to be sponsors of the Fringe Lounge at Downtown Art and supportive of Ben Kalis's endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Paul, and to Alina for uh, um, the Fringe Festival at large and also for mm -hmm. hosting us here. Um, I think what we've seen is that there's an incredible opportunity when folks from the arts community collaborate with our partners in public office, with uh, folks within the real estate community to find solutions together. Uh, and I'm very excited to see this legislation moving forward, and I'm calling on uh, City Council to help pass that. Thank you very much. <laughs>